right in the nick of time, the governor lifted some restrictions to help us all have a very Merry Christmas. There were also some other stories on your radar, so let's get to it. I'm Peter Sansas, and here's your trend spotting report. We've all been holding our breaths, hoping our declining car score would bring good news, and it worked. This week, Governor Lulian Guerrero gave us an early Christmas gift in the form of an executive order. Just in time to celebrate the holidays, the limit on social gatherings of persons not in your immediate family unit was increased to 15. And starting at 8 a.m. Saturday, restaurants can offer dine-in service again, but only at 25% capacity with a max of six people per table. Governor's Communication Director Crystal Paco San Augustin says it'll be a slow and steady process as we begin to reopen. And I want to make sure that we emphasize that, you know, the mitigation measures must remain in place. If you're going to go eat out, you should be signing in at the door. You should be sanitizing and taking your temperature. Again, any mitigation measures we can enforce, we will. Uh, that's six feet between tables. Uh, we're seeing uh, the, you know chairs being covered up with uh, the plastics. We're seeing plexiglass go up. We also need you to, when you speak with your server, please wear your mask, you know, protect them. And so we ask that when you're not eating, you're wearing your mask and you're being, um, you're being uh, considerate of the people next to you, especially, most especially your server, who's also just trying to make a living. Still in the COVID realm, more frontline workers have begun to receive the Pfizer vaccine, including members of the Guam Fire Department. But strangely, another very critical first responding agency didn't make the priority list this week. Guam Police Department Chief Steve Ignacio has been reaching out to public health to help get members of the force vaccinated. Part of a police officer's job is to respond to incidences of crime, and it puts them at risk for the virus. It's no wonder Ignacio is pushing so hard to help protect his officers. Officers, uh, I think, uh, you know, should be prioritized, uh, you know, that we'd go out there. Uh, we have had positives in, in our department uh, through exposure to, to the work that we've done uh, in conjunction with the, the public health uh, department. Police officers have had to respond to incidences where a person has passed off the virus and some have even contracted the virus while on the job. Our Facebook top fan Cheryl Jensen chimed in and said, thank you for your service. Hope you get the vaccine soon. And keeping with the police, our men and women in blue were busy this week locating a man who was allegedly involved in a deadly assault. 25-year-old Ronat Renato Chitaro is the main suspect in the December 8th to Manning stabbing that led to Arthur Wakuk's death. Chitaro is no stranger to crime. He was just released from the Department of Corrections four months ago after spending two years behind bars for robbery and aggravated assault, among other charges. And before that, he was in and out of jail with multiple arrests. Chitaro isn't the only person this week facing charges related to a person's death. 19-year-old Jeremy Janelle Alvarez has been charged with aggravated murder and assault felony charges in the death of 77-year-old Sucha Park Allen. On December 8th, police were called to a Sinahanya home where the woman was found bloodied and beaten with a hammer nearby. Alvarez allegedly struck the woman with a hammer several times after asking her for Xanax. The woman was rushed to the Naval Hospital and later succumbed to her injuries. Now let's pivot to some mischief down south that upset some residents. Perhaps it was the Grinch who chained up our beloved Santa Maria and Camelin statue overlooking the waters of Marizzo. On Thursday, KUM spoke to village mayor Ernest Chargaloff, who was frustrated after finding the statue vandalized. Disrespectful to our faith and our religion. You know, I, I, I don't understand. Wednesday night, the mayor's staff and a community of volunteers gathered to bring joy and the Christmas spirit to the village, decorating the park where the island's patron saint stands. The mayor was disturbed to find the chains wrapped around the statue's hands. Try to put together a, a nice display of the park because it, it represents a sacred place, a holistic place. And for the individual to come here and put a chain, I don't know what kind of message he's trying to you know, uh, convey. Chargaloff says he'll put up surveillance cameras in the area and that the person who left the chains will be held responsible. The interview was streamed over KUM's Facebook page and viewers chimed in. Gina Marie Call said it was a message someone was trying to make. What that is, I'm not sure. Joanne Rapola said she is the one that protects our island. People need to grow up. Stop acting so silly. Better start praying because what comes around goes around. And Mary Camacho said disrespectful whoever did it. Hopefully that didn't dampen their spirits too much. And I hope that you keep your spirits up too now that we can see more of each other. But we have to still continue to practice all the things that we've done to keep each other safe. So keep that mask up. We'll see you next week. Adios.